this video is going to cover the 8-1 warm-up and then the continuation of the notes for 8-1. So for number one, it says to write the first four terms of the sequence and assume that n begins with one. Remember that we'll assume it begins with one unless it's stated otherwise. So I want to find the first four terms, which means I'm going to find a sub one and then a two and then a three and a four. So I'm going to take one and I'm going to plug it in everywhere there's an n. So two to the first over two to the first plus one, which is two over two plus one, which is two thirds. And then everywhere there's an n, put a two. So two to the second over two to the second plus one, four over four plus one, which is four fifths. Uh, a to the third or a, a sub three would be two to the third over two to the third plus one, which is eight over eight plus one or eight ninths, and a sub four, two to the fourth over two to the fourth plus one, which would be 16 over 16 plus one, which is 16 seventeenths. And then you wanna list them in the order in which you got them. So it'd be two thirds, then four fifths, then eight ninths, then 16 seventeenths. And that would be the first four terms in the sequence. Number two says find the first five terms of the sequence. That's defined recursively. So remember recursively the term in the sequence relies on knowing the term before it. So if I have a sub one, that's the first term. A sub two would be the second. And I would take a sub one, the one before it, minus four. So this would be nine minus four, which is five. And then a sub three would be five minus four, which would be one. A4 would be 1 minus 4, which would be negative 3. And A5 would be negative 3 minus 4, which is negative 7. So in order, first term to fifth term would be 9, then 5, then 1, then negative 3, then negative 7. You want to make sure you include the first one which was given to you. Okay, number three is our factorial. So remember the factorial with the, or the number with the exclamation mark is a factorial, which means it is that number times working its way down until you hit one. So 10 factorial would actually be 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five, all the way down to one. But when we simplify these, we wanna look at the larger of the two numbers, which is clearly 10, and break it down until we hit the smaller. So it'd be 10 times nine times eight factorial over eight factorial. Those are gonna cancel out and I get nine times 10, which is 90. Okay, so we're gonna save number four for tomorrow since we haven't covered the summation notation yet. And we're actually gonna go right into the rest of those notes which be pick with summation. So this is a continuation of eight one. And today we're gonna to just talk about summation notation and how to simplify it. So summation notation is the sum of the first n terms of a sequence that's represented by the following. So i on the bottom is your variable and it's gonna give you a starting place. So i equals one means you're starting at a sub one and then the number at the top is where you're stopping. So whether the bottom, let's say it was one on the bottom and then the number three at the top, this means you're gonna do a one, a two and a three if the number at the top was four, you do a one, a two, a three, a four. You always stop at the number on the top. So some vocabulary here on the bottom, the i is called the index, so that's your variable. The n is the upper limit of the summation, so whatever's at the top is where you're stopping. And the one in this case is the lower limit. So the one on the bottom is where you're starting, the one at the top is where you're stopping. And then it's the sum of all those. So you're gonna find what a sub one is, a sub two is, a sub three, a sub four, and so on and so forth. And you're gonna add them all together at the end to get one single number. So example nine just says find the sum. So again, number at the bottom is where I start, number at the top is where I stop, and next to it is what I'm plugging it into. So I'm gonna find when i is zero, I'm gonna find when i is one, when i is two and when i is three, I'm gonna take and plug them each in. So this would be zero plus one 
times 0 minus 2, which is 1 times negative 2 or negative 2. And then it would be when i is 1. So this would be 1 plus 1 times 1 minus 2 or 2 times negative 1, which is also negative 2. Then you go to the next one where i is 2. So 2 plus 1 times 2 minus 2 or 3 times 0, which is 0. And then the last one where i is 3. So 3 plus 1 times 3 minus 2 or 4 times 1, which is 4. And at the end, we're going to take and all, add up all these numbers together. So I get negative 2 plus negative 2, that's negative 4, plus 0 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0. So the summation is actually 0 for this example. So if you have a graphing calculator, if you'll take it out, I'm actually going to show you how to plug this into your calculator. Alright, so on the graphing calculator, if you'll go to the button that says math, if I click math, and I scroll all the way down here, you'll see where it says zero, there's summation. If I click there, I get the same symbol that I have, that little sigma notation. So in the bottom you want to put a variable. We're going to put this little x, t, theta, so we're going to actually just call it x, even though it's i, it still just represents the variable, equals, and we're going to start at zero. And then we're going to scroll up to the top and we're going to put the upper bound, which is 3. And then we're going to go over into the parentheses and we're going to put what's there, which is, I'm going to open the parentheses, x plus 1, close those parentheses, open the next set of parentheses, x minus 2. And then hit enter and there's the summation so it's automatically going from 0 to 3 and adding them together which is 0. So the older, um, this would be the TI-84 and newer, the older TI calculators will also do this but it's a lot more complicated. Um, if you have that older calculator then we can talk about it. But the easiest way to do it is with these newer calculators to do that summation. Again, just like with the other matrices stuff, you will not have your graphing calculator on these tests or quizzes. So this is great just to check your answer or to use it for standardized tests. But keep in mind, you won't have it on any kind of assessment for our class. Okay, so you're going to use the rest of the class period to work on the uh, 8.1 homework part 4. I mean, sorry, part 2. And then you're going to submit to the assignment on Canvas the part two homework before you leave class today. Have a great day.